Hey friends, welcome to a new video and welcome to the one video that I have been so excited to film. I just cannot contain my excitement for this readathon. It is time for Jane Austen July. Could not be more excited for a readathon. I have been looking forward to this since I started my channel and I actually participated in Jane Austen July quietly last July so I followed some of the prompts but this year I want to go all out. This year I am just making July all about Jane Austen. If I read any book that's not Jane Austen related that's fine but I would really really like to just make the whole month Jane Austen themed and I love that there are quite a few prompts so it's possible to do that and I will be looking at my laptop so don't mind me looking down but I have all the prompts there and I will be sharing with you my pile of possibilities for Jane Austen July. I'm not a hardcore TBR person so it'll just be a list of books that I could possibly read for each of the prompts. This readathon is being hosted by three lovely ladies on booktube. We have Katie from Books and Things, Claudia from Spinster's Library, and Marissa from Blatantly Bookish, and I will link their channels down below as well as their announcement videos for this readathon. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So prompt number one is to read one of Jane Austen's main six novels. So there is going to be a Pride and Prejudice read along and I will definitely be reading Pride and Prejudice along with everyone else participating. But I would also like to read Emma. So these are the two books that I would really like to read for this prompt. And Emma is the last of the six main novels that I have to read by Jane Austen. And I have heard nothing but good things. And I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to read it. <laughs> I don't know much about it other than um, Emma is not too keen on getting married herself, but she likes to match make. So it should be a very funny book and I'm very much looking forward to it. Prompt number two is to read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her six main novels. So I have a few for this. The hosts are also having a Lady Susan read along, so I'll definitely read Lady Susan. I'd also like to read The Beautiful Cassandra, which is one of Jane Austen's juvenilia. This has a few of them in here, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. I would also like to try Sanditon, which is an unfinished novel by Jane Austen. and. Um, in this edition that I found at my library, we have Sanditon and the Watsons. So I would also like to read the Watsons and Lady Susan's also in there. So it works out perfectly. And depending on how much time I have, I'd like to kind of dip my toes into Jane Austen's letters. So I found this edition, um, I think it's the complete Jane Austen letters. So it's definitely a long book and I would not read the whole thing but I would like to read some of the letters in there. So that's another option for this prompt. Then we have prompt number three, which is to read a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time. So all the books that I chose for this readathon, I either have to own the book or it's available at my library. And um, my library did have a few Jane Austen, like nonfiction, like Jane Austen related nonfiction works. Uh, they didn't have too many, but I am pretty happy with what I found. So the options for this prompt are Jane Austen at Home. And this is by Lucy Worsley, who is a really, really good writer. And um, I've seen some of her documentaries that she's done. And it's just, I really like her narrating voice. And so I hope that that translates well to the page, um, to the written word. And I think this book is just kind of... Um, talking about like where Jane Austen grew up, what she would do in her childhood and her uh, adolescence and just like what her day-to-day -day life was like. So I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Then we have Jane Austen's England and this one is um, said to be a cultural snapshot of everyday life in the world of Jane Austen. And that sounds very, very interesting to me. I'm very interested in the Regency era and yeah, just really, really excited for this one as well, if I can get to it. Then we have fashion in the time of Jane Austen and the title is pretty self-explanatory for this one, but I am really, really interested in um, fashion from different historical time periods. So from the Victorian era and all the eras before, I just, I love how people dress and I love learning about the different materials that went into the clothing and um, how the styles came about and everything. So I'm really intrigued by this one. I'm not sure if I'll get to it, but it's another option. Then we have The Real Jane Austen, A Life in Small Things. And this one I actually just got the audiobook for, so I will probably like cheat and start it before Jane Austen July. I actually listened to like the first few minutes of the audiobook just to see if I was okay with like the narrating style and everything. And it seems really, really intriguing so far. So this is one I would definitely like to continue listening throughout the end of June and then throughout July as well. And then this one isn't 
technically a nonfiction work about Jane Austen or her time, but it is a cookbook and it is Dinner with Mr. Darcy, recipes inspired by the novels of Jane Austen. And this one I also chose because I'm interested in food from different time periods and what people ate and what people ate in different classes of society. And so this one should be very, very interesting. And I would love to try some of the recipes from here. Then we have, I think, my favorite prompt, which is number four, read a retelling of a Jane Austen novel or a work of historical fiction set in Jane Austen's time. So I have quite the list here. And again, I can pick and choose. I don't have to read all of them. Um, but the first one is Jane and the Unpleasantness at Scargrave Manor. And this is a mystery novel. And Jane Austen is a detective in this series. And this is the first book. And I thought it sounded really interesting. I found it at my library and I love historical mysteries. I love Jane Austen, perfect mix. Along the same vein, we have Pride and Premeditation, which is a kind of a reimagining of Pride and Prejudice, but with a murderous twist. And in this one, Lizzie is the detective. So I am very, very excited for it. Then we have two contemporaries, which contemporary is a really big hit or miss genre for me, but I thought I'd try at least one of these. And so we have Lizzie and Jane. And this one says, Lizzie and Jane never saw eye to eye, but when illness brings them together, they discover they may, they may be more like Jane Austen's famous sisters after all. So it's like a retelling of Pride and Prejudice from what I can see. And then by the same author, we have the Austin Escape. And this one says, after years of following her best friend's lead, Mary Davies finds a whimsical trip back to Austin's Regency England paves the way to a new future. So I'm not quite sure which book this would be a retelling of, but it has to do with Jane Austen. So I would definitely be open to trying it out. Then we have The Clergyman's Wife, a Pride and Prejudice novel. And this is about Charlotte Collins, who was Charlotte Lucas, one of Lizzie's best friends. And she is the woman that marries Mr. Collins in Pride and Prejudice. And Mr. Collins is one of those characters that I love to hate. So I'm really curious where this novel is going to take Charlotte's story. The next book is one that I want to prioritize above all the others because I just recently hauled it and I have been so excited to read it. And that is The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. So this book I will probably read after I read Emma because it is about a house party being hosted at Emma and her husband's house. So I'd like to get to know Emma and Mr. Knightley a little bit better before I read this book. So it's a party hosted at their house and um, Mr. Wickham, who is one of the villains from Pride and Prejudice ends up murdered. And so we have multiple characters from different Jane Austen novels coming together and trying to figure out who killed him. And I just think that premise sounds so fun and I just can't wait to read this. I'm very excited. And then we have A Castaway in Cornwall by Julie Classen. This was on my June pile of possibilities and I ended up reading another Julie Classen in June. So I decided to move this one over to July. And this one is also set in the Regency era. So it fits this prompt. So this is about a woman named Laura who likes to walk along the coast in Cornwall and look for clues as to different lives that may have been lost at sea. And one day while Laura is walking along the beach, a man actually appears on the shore and he is a survivor of a shipwreck and the story goes from there. So this sounds very very interesting and I am very excited for it. I have a lot of books for the fourth prompt but that's totally okay. I love that I have so many options but the last one is Arabella by Georgette Hare and this is also set in the Regency era and it was also on my June pile of possibilities but I think I will save this for Jane Austen July. Then we have prompt number five which is to read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen so it has to have been published between 1775 and 1817. So a pretty well-known contemporary of Jane Austen is Frances Burney and I recently read Evelina by her and so I have the rest of Frances Burney's main novels here. We have Cecilia, Camilla, and The Wanderers. I'm hoping to read one of these in July. I'm not sure which one yet. If any of you guys have read these three books, uh, please let me know what you think I should read for Jane Austen July because I don't know which one to pick. So these are the options for prompt number five. Then prompt number six and seven have to do with movies and like adaptations, which I am looking forward to. So prompt number six is to watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. So 100% I will be watching the 1995 miniseries of Pride and Prejudice. It is one of my favorite miniseries of all time. I'm obsessed. And then I'd like to watch the 1995 Sense and Sensibility as well. And if I have time for it, I'll try out the 2020 Emma because I still haven't seen it. So those are the options for this prompt. And then prompt number seven is to watch a modern screen adaptation or retelling of a Jane Austen book. I'm not the biggest movie person and I'm more into historical like period dramas, but I may watch Clueless for this prompt. Um, I'll see. I'm not the biggest fan of like contemporary movies, but 
that's an option. So we shall see what happens. So those are the prompts for Jane Austen July. And that is my pile of possibilities for this readathon. And I am so excited. I'm so looking forward to reading just Jane Austen books, Jane Austen inspired books alongside a bunch of people here on booktube and you know, people just participating and I'm just oh so excited. Um, so I'm not a big vlogger. I actually don't really like vlogging, but I do plan on doing weekly vlogs throughout July. So I'm going to have a vlog per week. The reason is I'm going to be reading so much for Jane Austen July and I also have some um, activities planned. I have this Jane Austen puzzle <laughs> and I would really like to do it um, for the second time. So this is probably going to happen and I'll have like a little time lapse of me working on this puzzle. I also have this edition of Pride and Prejudice which has recipes in it so I would love to do some baking and then of course if I read the Mr. Darcy cookbook I'll do some baking from that as well some cooking so I'm really excited and oh I just I can't wait. As soon as July 1st hits I'm gonna start Pride and Prejudice and then probably Emma. If any of you guys are participating in Jane Austen July please let me know in the comments what you're going to be reading for the different prompts and you know even if you're only planning on reading one book that has to do with Jane Austen please let me know in the comments I would love to know. And that is it for this video and thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys for taking time out of your day to watch my videos. And I also wanted to say a big thank you to everyone because I recently hit 300 subscribers and it just means so much to me that you guys are sticking around and um, are interested in watching my videos and listening to me ramble. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you all next time. Bye!